from North Carolina. Uh, yes, Mr. Hitchens, I'd like to ask you uh, what you think of, uh, well, in this country, I guess, in particular, but you're experienced all throughout the world in uh, religious fundamentalism, fanaticism, or whatever, but uh, what do you think is the level of hypocrisy between uh, those who espouse religion and uh, fundamentalism or whatever, and what do you think they really do believe as such and uh, feel it within their yes. spirit. And I just wondered if you could comment on that in this country and, and, you know, perhaps throughout the world even. Yes, that's a very interesting question and uh, one has to ask it all the time. And it's been lent some point recently by the revelation of Mother, Mother Teresa's loss of... of um, it may not be correct to say exactly total loss of faith, but great loss of conviction, of certainty in, in her faith. Um, with someone like, say, um, Billy Graham, I think one can see all the symptoms of a, of a self-conscious fraud. I mean, someone who doesn't believe any of this at all, but is a, fair, a reasonably good businessman. I have a reason for thinking that, apart from the, the terrible appearance that he gives in public, the, I mean, the, the appallingly phony appearance, I mean to say, there was a, there was a, a Canadian Billy Graham, a contemporary of his, um, who north of the border was that, that crusade embodied, called uh, James Templeton, who wrote a memoir about the point where he himself realized that what he was talking was complete nonsense and, and no sensible person could believe it. And he went to Billy Graham and said, well, look, here's what's happened to me. Can, can you really go on saying this stuff? And Graham basically says, it's too late to stop now. And lots of people expect it of me and, you know, we're in business. And um, that's what I think is the case with a surprisingly large amount of it. But I'm not, um, I don't want to sound vulgar about it. I mean, I, I know a lot of people to whom religion means everything or, or a very great deal and who, who don't try to profit from it and has, don't stand to uh, profit from it either. So I, I don't reduce the, everything to, to a racket, but I think that racketeering is and always has been an important part of religion. Some religions simply are rackets. Scientology, for example, or Mormonism. It's, it's nothing more than the, the record of a, con, of a successful con job. But the spiritual life um, can't be entirely reduced to that, and here's the problem. You, in, when you ask, do people really believe that, there can't be an answer to it because they, they don't know any more than you do whether there was a virgin birth or a resurrection. If they say, I believe it, they're still, they, they're still believing in something that they have to know very probably didn't take place. So what are they asking us to believe? They're asking us to believe their propensity to faith, in other words, to take something on faith without argument or evidence. Well, if somebody wants me to believe that of them, that they will do that, then I will, but I feel that they're arguing against themselves and probably doing themselves an injustice. You think Billy Graham's an evil man? Yes, disgustingly evil man. I'll tell you again why I say that, choosing one out of a number of possible uh, answers. I think that uh, anti-Jewish prejudice is an unfailing sign of a sick and disordered person. It's a, it's, there are some kinds of prejudice, for example, I don't terrifically like people from Yorkshire, as it happens. I don't know why. I don't, but I, I don't think that convicts me of anything really insanitary. I, I probably would be a better person if I liked more people from Yorkshire. Anti-Semitism isn't like that. It's a, it's a, it's a horrible, uh, conspiratorial, pseudo-intellectual, mean-spirited, eventually lethal uh, piece of bigotry. You read the stuff that uh, Graham's been found saying to Richard Nixon on tape. You can get it from the Nixon Library now on the Jewish question. Once you've got over the revelation, which wasn't much of a revelation to me, of, of what a squalid little bigot President Nixon was, I, I guessed I knew that, you find that he's outmatched by the way that Billy Graham talks. Well, it doesn't mind. He, he does that in private and uh, harbors that stuff in private. And then goes out and, uh, and uh, rakes in the cash for preaching brotherhood and compassion. It's enough to make you sick. Who's an American president that you admire? There's also, there's no president, who, however uh, deserving of condemnation, who can't get Billy Graham to come to his side at just the point he, should, he is about ready to, or should be about ready, to be, uh, be either impeached or to be, make, make some kind of public apology or change of policy. No, this sort of valet, this religious valet is always at their hand, saying, no, no, I can make this look good for you. I can, I can, I can be your religious PR man, power worshipper cronyism.
bigotry. It's a very unattractive combination. And then going around spouting lies to young people for a living, lying to the young for a living. What a horrible career. I, I, I gather it's soon to be over. I certainly hope so.